What's up everybody? Welcome back. Patrick here. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to summarize together the two concepts that we went over in the previous video. So we went over m and proposition one with the no tax case. And we concluded that the value of an unlevered firm equals the value of a levered firm. Some implications of that was that the share price is constant and also the weighted average cost of capital is constant. In that same video, I also introduced this super useful formula that we're going to continually use in this chapter. We're actually going to be using it in this video as well. Value of a firm is always equal to the earnings before interest and taxes times 1 minus T all over the weighted average cost of capital. Now this is the general formula because we're dealing with the no tax case you can forget about this 1 minus T in this specific video. But further on in the chapter when we are dealing with taxes that 1 minus T will have to be there. And then m and Proposition 2 with the no tax case, we concluded the return on equity increases with leverage. And we showed that technically through a formula. So the return on equity equals the return on assets plus the return on assets minus the return on debt times the debt to equity ratio. So now what I want to do is I want to start off by expanding on this value of an unlevered firm for now. And the value of an unlevered firm is going to be what? Well, we know that the value of any firm is its earnings before interest and taxes over the weighted average cost of capital when we're dealing with no taxes. So instead of actually putting value firm here, you can actually put value of any firm. So the value of an unlevered firm is just going to be this formula. And again, we're dealing with no taxes, so I'm going to leave out that 1 minus T. So the value of an unlevered firm is the earnings before interest and taxes over the weighted average cost of capital. However, what's the weighted average cost of capital for an unlevered firm going to be? Well, a good start to that would be to write down the weighted average cost of capital formula, the general formula. D over V times RD plus E over V times RE. And remember, there's no 1 minus T here because we're dealing with no taxes. So what's the weighted average cost of capital going to be of an unlevered firm? Well, an unlevered firm means that the firm has no leverage. So that means that what? Debt is equal to 0. That means that this here is going to be zero, which means this whole part of the formula is going to be zero. Now for an unlevered firm, what else does that mean? It also means that the equity is equal to the value of the firm, right? Because this V here is basically the value of the assets. And if there's no debt, that means that the assets on the left side has to equal the equity on the right side. So basically another implication of an unlevered firm is E is equal to V. So if E is equal to V, then this bracket's going to be 1. And then you're just going to be taking 1, multiplying it by the return on equity. So the weighted average cost of capital of an unlevered firm is equal to the return on equity of an unlevered firm. And this here you'll sometimes see being represented as RU. This basically means the return of an unlevered firm. And they show that as its own rate because again the weighted average cost of capital of an unlevered firm is equal to the return on equity of an unlevered firm. Might as well put that as one notation, which is RU. So value of an unlevered firm is basically EBIT over the weighted average cost of capital of an unlevered firm or the return on equity of an unlevered firm or this RU. So you can represent this weighted average cost of capital by any of these three things here. So now what I want to do is I want to take all of this and start showing it on a graph. 
and the graph is going to be the return or that's going to be expressed as percentages on the y-axis and then the x-axis is going to be the debt to equity ratio. So let's start here. What happens when the debt to equity ratio is zero? Well, when the debt to equity ratio is zero, that means that the firm is unlevered, right? Because that means this debt is going to be zero. So that means that we're going to be here. Basically, the return of that firm is going to be this RU, or this return of equity of the unlevered firm, or the weighted average cost of capital of the unlevered firm. All of those are the same. And let's say that that falls here on the graph. So now what's going to happen as we increase the debt to equity ratio? Well, if this is RU or this is <clears throat> also the weighted average cost of capital of an unlevered firm, we know that the weighted average cost of capital is constant no matter how much leverage you take. So we can represent the weighted average cost of capital as a straight line like this. So this here is basically the weighted average cost of capital. And if you remember, we also said that the weighted average cost of capital can be represented as this return on assets here. So weighted average cost of capital is always going to be constant for an unlevered firm and any type of other leverage that you take on. What happens to the return on equity as you increase leverage? Well, we know that the return on equity is going to increase, and it's basically going to be a linear function of this debt to equity ratio, because notice how everything else is constant. So it's like this debt to equity ratio is the X of a linear formula. So the return on equity is going to increase like this here. So this here is your return on equity. But when the firm is unlevered, that return on equity is equal to the weighted average cost of capital of the firm, as we showed here. Now, you may be asking yourself, if the return on equity is increasing with more leverage, then shouldn't the weighted average cost of capital also be increasing? And we can look at the formula to answer that question. So with more leverage, the return on equity is increasing. However, notice with more leverage, the debt figure is increasing, and then this equity figure here is decreasing. So this return on equity, even though it's increasing, this portion of the formula is weighted less because this weight is decreasing. And then this weight here, the debt over the value of the firm is increasing, more leverage, more debt. However, as we mentioned, this return on debt is always going to be constant. So what happens is that weighted average cost of capital stays constant because of this. Even though that return on equity is increasing, again, that weight is decreasing. So it keeps that weighted average uh, cost of capital constant. And then this return on debt, we can actually show down here. It's going to be less than the weighted average cost of capital. And that is going to be constant as well. So when you take the average of the return on debt, return on equity, also with all of the weights, that weighted average cost of capital is still going to stay constant. And remember, this is all for a no tax case. This graph here is going to look different when we're dealing with taxes. But for now, for a no tax case, this is how everything looks like in this graph. Now, you may be thinking to yourself at this point, there's a lot of information to take in. And that's true. But this is what's important, this graph. You have to have this graph written down. And we'll be referring to it when we're doing questions. These explanations that I've been doing on the side here, I've been trying to just relate those explanations to creating this graph, but those explanations are not as important. But knowing this graph here, remembering how all of this works as you increase that debt to equity ratio, that's what's important. So if you're confused about all the explanations, don't worry about it too much. Just make sure that uh, you write 
this graph down. And don't mean to pour more on or be that guy, but I'm going to introduce just one more graph. It's going to be a super simple graph, and I'm going to show this here, this value of an unlevered firm equals the value of a levered firm in a graph. So this graph is going to be super simple. So what we'll do is we'll have this y-axis here labeled as the value of a firm. And then this x-axis we can have as the total debt. You can also label this x-axis as the debt to equity ratio. Basically, this graph is going to be a straight line. Right, so the value of an unlevered firm when the debt is zero is equal to the value of any other levered firm. So we took this, showed it on a graph, it's just a straight line. So these two graphs, write them down, and we'll be constantly referring to this summary when we are doing questions in the future. And one more thing I want to mention is notice how these two graphs here relate through this formula. So you could put this formula sort of like in the middle of the graphs. And if you think about it, the value of a firm is constant because notice how this weighted average cost of capital is constant as well. We, all, we always know that the earnings before interest and taxes is going to be constant because the assets of the firm are not changing. But in order for that value of a firm to be constant, weighted average cost of capital has to be constant as well. And we mentioned that in m and Proposition 1, but now we are showing this through a diagram. And as I mentioned, what you can do with these graphs is use them to mark down what you're given in a question and also mark down what you're looking for. So for example, a question might give you the value of a levered firm. Well, out of these diagrams, where is that? That's here. They'll give you the value of a levered firm. Maybe they'll also give you the earnings before interest and taxes of that firm. Well, if we have the value of a levered firm and we have the earnings before interest and taxes, we can find out what this weighted average cost of capital is of that firm. And that's going to put us here on the diagram. And then maybe they're asking us to find the return on equity. Well, we know that the weighted average cost of a levered firm is equal to the weighted average cost of an unlevered firm, this RU, or this RA, it's constant. And then we can maybe use that RA and then move up this line here to get what we're looking for, the return on equity of that levered firm. So that's an example. You can always mark down what you're given in a question and see how you can use these graphs to move to whatever it is you're looking for. Another thing that these diagrams will help you do is to not make things more confusing than they have to be. Because a lot of times what's going to happen in this chapter is you're going to get a bunch of information in a question and a lot of the information you won't need in order to answer it. So for example, let's say that you are given information about a firm. You're given its earnings before interest and taxes. Let's say that if the firm is levered, you're given its return on equity and you're also given its return on debt. And let's say they also give you the return of the firm if it's unlevered, so this here. And then they ask you to find what's the value of this firm going to be. Well, notice how the value of any firm is just the earnings before interest and taxes over the weighted average cost of capital. So if we can find what the weighted average cost of capital is, notice how it's constant throughout. And because they gave you this return of an unlevered firm, which is the weighted average cost of capital of that unlevered firm, that's the same as the weighted average cost of capital for any other firm. So we can just use that amount, plug it in here, and then get that value of the levered firm that we are looking for. So notice how we didn't even have to use the return on equity of the levered firm or the return on debt that they gave us. So that's just an example. Anyway, this may all seem uh, confusing to you for now because I just introduced these graphs, but make sure that you write down this whole summary here and have it on the side when you're doing questions 
it will help you see visually how everything works and it will start sinking in your head a little bit better the more questions you do. Now, unfortunately, this whole summary here is just for the no tax case. So we're also gonna make a summary like this when we're dealing with taxes, but I'm constantly gonna be referring to these summaries when I'm doing future questions.